All right, Paul. It's your last official day as uh, lead tech in uh, our lab. What, what do you? What were you? What are your thoughts on your time here at uh, the Great Channel Islands? My thoughts on my great time at Channel Islands. Well, <clears throat> this was an opportunity for me to broaden my horizons, both uh, in the academic sense and in the professional sense. I was. Uh, Thrown a project, <laughs> not handed, thrown a project. You caught a project. I caught a project, and uh, it, it turned into well, all this. Uh, it, it's amazing. Look at all this cool stuff. There's commercial robots. There's made robots. There's some robots making themselves over there printing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Underwater robots. Underwater there's all robots. kinds of cool and stuff. And air robots. Air robots. So yeah, it's uh, it's just amazing how much can come from, you know, uh, a small push, which you gave me into environmental robotics. It was started with a small little submarine that, well, couldn't even pass for a submarine when it was handed <laughs> to me. And uh, what came from that was this whole team. Now we have approximately 15 students. We have uh, four or five advisory faculty. We have international collaborators and a myriad of uh, published papers, well, soon to be published papers, I should say, uh, covering things from geomorphology to uh, discovering new species of uh, fluorescent clams to many other things and uh, so and a lot of those people didn't aren't, aren't quote-unquote robot people no and they didn't come in knowing how to solder or whatever and and the goal is not to learn how to solder the goal is to like grab information from the environment and so it's available to a wide range of folks right right well with the change of technology with the whole maker movement with the advent of uh, 3d printers and taking DIY to the next level people who are interested in obtaining data can use things that people have already created, like 3D models or robots or that sort of thing, and then add sensors on them, and it enables them to go out and get the data that they want. So they can focus more on actually getting the data rather than being an engineer and creating just the tool. The tools are already there, and what it is is with the open source communities, we essentially share the base and then expand. And as we expand, we share what we expanded on. We added this sensor, we added that sensor. We share it with our peers, and it makes science uh, evolve much faster than if everything is you know, kept behind closed doors or kept as an insider secret. And so now we can focus on characterizing the important environmental data that we're interested in. And so everybody has cool programs all over the place, all kinds of neat stuff going on. But what would you say the unique thing that uh, Channel Islands provided you that maybe you wouldn't have gotten at some other location? Well, Channel Islands is small, which is a great thing and it's a, a, a difficult thing at the same time. Being small, uh, we're light in resources. So we've been That's forced... a polite way to say we don't have any money. That's good. I like yes, that. Yes. <laughs> and so being being that we're we're low on resources, we become kind of the scrappy and kind of like scavengers, meaning that we do everything that we can with the cheapest method of doing it. So it makes us think outside of the box, meaning we gain critical thinking skills of how can we do some big research projects with meager means? And so it, it, it challenges you to, to figure out ways of doing things such as building your own platform or putting together a kit or essentially finding ways of getting resources like scholarships and grants and that sort of thing. And also, if it wasn't for the small size of the school, I wouldn't have the interaction uh, almost first name basis with the faculty that I've worked with. Almost. Uh, almost. Almost. Well, there is a, a <laughs> there, there is a level of respect, and so so when you become a colleague, then it's more appropriate. But right. if you're a student, then it's doctor. There you go. And so, uh, so yeah, if, if it wasn't for how small the school was, I wouldn't have the the exchange with professors that I've had and the opportunities for research. And so, because when you go to large schools, like I've I've been through classes at Berkeley, I've been through classes at Davis. And I was just a small little ant among an anthill, whereas I'm in a classroom full of students essentially the size of a small high school. And so I, I can have uh, uh, interaction with my professors quite easily. And so if, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have had the opportunities that I've had uh, to get me where I am today. Cool. And so, uh, so we are better. All this is a consequence, uh, or most of this is a consequence of, of the great Paul Spar. So even though he is uh, maturing in his career now, he's still a part of our team. And uh, we're wishing Paul the best as he goes on to this next adventure. 
And uh, I don't know, drive safely. Thank you. Pilot safely. I will pilot safely. <laughs>